first cruising feature takes us to exotic Thailand. We're headed for Thailand's west coast, where hundreds of unique limestone islands rise dramatically from the Andaman Sea. Near Phuket on Panga Bay, we have an appointment at sea, a meeting with probably today's most famous living sailor, the legendary Welsh explorer and writer, Kristen Jones. In his latest adventure, sailing east around the world, Kristen has chosen to stop here to work with disabled young people through his pet project, the Atlantis Society. Our 40-foot catamaran, because of its stability and huge deck area, make it an ideal craft for teaching disabled youngsters to sail. In 1967, Hal and Margaret were novice sailors beginning a remarkable adventure, a 19-month exploration of the Pacific Ocean in Whisper, their 35-foot fiberglass cutter. The trip brought them to many exotic locations and peoples, often as strange to the Ross as the Ross were to them. Among their fondest memories was French Polynesia, the lush greens and vegetation, the slow pace of life. Such a paradise completely seduced the Ross. But as the years passed, they wondered if their glorious memories were merely colored by each passing year's increasing nostalgia. To find out, we follow Hal and Margaret back to French Polynesia in the heart of the South Pacific as they travel from Papillete in Tahiti to Raiatea where they charter a boat and then sail briskly before the trade winds to the islands of Taha'a, Huahini, and Bora Bora. The Spanish were the first sailors to give this place a name, Las Islas Encantadas, the Enchanted Islands. Our group comes together in Quito, the capital city of Ecuador, over 9,000 feet up in the Andes Mountains. From here, they will fly more than 600 miles to San Cristobal Island and spend the next eight days exploring the mystical Galapagos Islands by sailboat and by foot. Resting Cloud proves to be a superb sailing vessel and quickly carries our group to their first destination, Kicker Rock, one of hundreds of formations created when volcanoes erupted under the surface of the sea three to five million years ago. It is here that Charles Darwin formed his theory of evolution calling the Galapagos a little world unto itself. I had heard that Tonga was like the Caribbean used to be 25 years ago. The best anchorages, the best snorkeling, the best sailing, really the best of everything in one unspoiled cruising ground. And if all that isn't appealing enough, Tonga has a fascinating culture. It's the only country in the South Pacific that was never colonized by Europeans. That really gives it a unique flavor. Tonga is situated in between New Zealand and Hawaii. It consists of four major groups of islands, most of which are unpopulated. We've decided to focus on the Vavau group, considered by many to be the most beautiful. From April till early November, you've got a very predictable trade wind of about 15 to 20 knots from the southeast. Because these islands are volcanic, they rise straight out of the sea. It's amazing. You can be within 50 yards of land and still have 200 feet of depth under your keel. However, the islands are surrounded by atolls, which can be a navigational problem. We always put somebody on the bow to eyeball navigate by reading the color of the water. That's the easiest to do when the sun is at your back and you've got a bird's eye view. Sailing is very popular up here. They call it the Bay of Islands because there is something like 158 islands. The islands are located up towards the top of the North Island in New Zealand. The main group of islands in the Bay of Islands are cover an area of something like 10 to 20 miles inside the sheltered natural harbour of the Bay of Islands. And if you wish to go further, you can go outside Cape Brett, heading south down the coast, or head north up to Wangaroa Harbour, which is just north of the Cavalli Island. And each of them has a number of anchorages, so a 
if it decides it's going to get up a little bit breezy one evening, all you have to do is pull the anchor and slip round the corner to the other bay and you've got yourself another sheltered anchorage. The islands themselves in the Bay of Islands are all tree covered, uh, pine trees, native bush, sandy beaches, mainly on the inside uh, side of the islands, and kelp covered rocks on the seaward side. Uh, most of the bays have sandy bottom, good holding, good anchorages. Generally in the summer, just beautiful sea breezes, maybe from 10 up to 20 knots.